Now that Nvidia has officially announced the RTX 50 series GPUs, we know the 5080 and 5090 will launch January the 30th, 2025. We know the 5070 and 5070 Ti will launch sometime after that. And we also know the pricing to all four of these GPUs. I'm sure the comment section will be absolutely wonderful on today's video. Look, with every new GPU generation, there are new people that come along and get into the hobby for the first time, okay? There are new PC gamers, new PC builders. And honestly, I think that's a wonderful thing. I want to see the PC space grow. I want to see more people involved in PC building and PC gaming. I think that is truly wonderful. However, whenever you're new to something, well, you're also inexperienced and you don't really know what to expect. And so for the newcomers, it's going to be very easy for them to believe that the 5070 will magically match the 4090 in performance, even though we all know that's not true. And I proved it in my last video, but some of you are still in denial about it. But anyway, it's, it's not going to match it. They're also going to believe that they can actually go get a 5070 for $549. For some people, that will be true, but for the average gamer, it won't be true, and I'm here to basically let you know that hey, one, it's not true, and two, here's why it's not true, and three, this is why all the other GPUs look so much more expensive, and I, I just want to shed some light on that because NVIDIA is really good at marketing. They're really good at marketing. But sometimes marketing doesn't really live up to what the reality is for the average gamer. And now listen, let me make this abundantly clear. I don't have any type of insider information. I haven't spoken to anybody and no, I don't have a source at a retail store leaking me information. Even if I did, I don't even think I would share that information because how can I know that it's actually accurate? I'm just looking at the history of GPUs, things that we experience with every generation, and also looking at information that anybody can literally Google. Let's get into it. At first glance, it would appear like Nvidia is giving us a price reduction across the board with the exception of the upcoming RTX 5090. However, most gamers don't care about the 5090 because it is an enthusiast level GPU and the average gamer simply won't be able to afford it and honestly probably doesn't even care to afford it. Rather most gamers will be looking at the 5070 and 5070 Ti. Technically speaking, Nvidia has not lied about anything. They will be offering their own version of these GPUs called the FE models or the Founders Edition models, and those models will be offered for the prices that Nvidia has listed. The problem here is that the Founders Edition models have a limited supply chain. Well, unfortunately, what that means is that you can't just go buy these cards anywhere you want. They're not going to be available at Amazon.com. They're not going to be available at Newegg.com, for example. Rather, the only place I know that you can buy these cards is directly from Best Buy. Sometimes in the past, Nvidia has offered the Founders Edition models directly through their website. However, I'm not sure if they're doing that again this year, but I do know that Best Buy is offering the Founders Edition models again this year. In fact, they're already up on the website. You can see the cards, you can see the images, you can see the pricing, and you can even click that button that says notify me once available. And so technically speaking, if you want a Founders Edition model, you can get a Founders Edition model for the prices that Nvidia has marketed to you, but it's only through Best Buy's website. And so if you have a Best Buy near you or in your region, great, that's awesome. But if you don't, you're kind of SOL and that now forces you over to the AIB partner cards. And you might be saying, okay, that's cool, I think, but what's an AIB partner card? Well, AIB stands for add-in board, so it's an add-in board partner card. And basically, these are any NVIDIA GPUs that are not the Founders Edition models. So that would be ASUS, Gigabyte, MSI, Zotac, and others. Now, the benefit here is that you will have a lot more availability of these cards. And so pretty much anywhere that sells a GPU will be offering the AIB cards. And even at Best Buy, they will still offer the AIB cards. And so overall, from a product availability standpoint, AIBs are probably what you will have the most access to. But the problem comes down to the pricing. Money talks at the end of the day, right? And now this is where everything starts to fall apart. Nvidia is the one that announces the new GPUs. Nvidia is the one that says these are the prices. However, on the back side of things, what you're not seeing is that AIBs are having to pay Nvidia money to have access to the GPU. And again, you can Google this information. A simple Google search will show you that yes, AIB partners are paying Nvidia money in order to have access to their GPU. And the same is true for AMD and the same is true for Intel as well. This is a standard common industry practice. In fact, you see this in all industries. I mean, in the movie industry, if you want to use a song in your movie, you have to pay a licensing fee in order to use that song in your movie. This is standard common practice. And so in basic terms, here's what this means. NVIDIA markets a new GPU at a certain price. However, that price is only available on a limited supply of GPUs. You, the consumer, on average, 
probably won't have access to that model. So you're gonna have access to all the other models. However, all the other models, the AIB models, are coming in at a disadvantage because they're already negative by having to pay NVIDIA to even have access to the GPU. And so now that means they have to charge more than NVIDIA's pricing in order to make any kind of profit at all. And then that cost is passed on to you, the consumer. And so now you're looking at it and saying, okay, NVIDIA said it would be 549 for a 5070, but it's actually 600 or 620 or 615. Or Now, with that being said, though, some AIBs do strive to offer an MSRP model or as close to MSRP as they possibly can. And that's great and fantastic, but a lot of times that means it's a stripped down model. So maybe that means all of their other cards have triple fans and the MSRP model only has a dual fan. Or maybe that means all of their cards have a dual BIOS, but you know the MSRP model doesn't. And it definitely often means that you're not getting RGB, right? Because RGB lighting is one of the easiest things to cut cost on. Just simply don't add in lights and now you save all of that money. And so a lot of times you can get access to an MSRP model from an AIB partner if they offer it and if you're lucky, but you're gonna have a cut down model. It's not gonna be a bad card by any means, but it's just not gonna have all the same features that a higher end model would. And now that brings me to my final point or final question rather. Are AIB partner cards worth it above the MSRP models? And here's what I would say. It comes down to you and what you want in your GPU. There's a whole lot of subjectivity going on here. For example, some people care about RGB lighting, some people don't. Some people care about acoustics of the card and how loud it gets, some people don't. Some people care about how cold the card will be, some people don't, as long as it doesn't necessarily throttle the performance. And so like I just said, there's a whole lot of subjectivity going on here, a lot of personal preference. But here's what I can tell you. Looking at previous benchmarks when other channels have compared different models of cards, you can see that on average, AIB partner cards, when compared to the Founders Edition models, they typically run colder, they typically clock higher, oftentimes they offer you more features like a dual BIOS, more customization on RGB lighting, and oftentimes not only can they clock higher out of the box, but they often have extra headroom available to go even further if you're willing to tune it yourself. And so there's a lot of reasons why you may want to go with an AIB partner model and go with one above MSRP. And so there are benefits there. The question really becomes, do you actually care about that? Now, the other thing here that's a little bit sneaky is that NVIDIA did make this announcement in the United States of America. And notice how every one of these prices end in 9. 549, 749, 999, 1999. And that's because here in America, unfortunately, we don't operate like the rest of the world. We don't include taxes in our prices. We try to give you that lowest cost possible and marketing does this little trick where you go one penny down to round everything to the 999 marker and it actually works a lot of times people will see that and say oh the 5090 is not two thousand dollars it's one thousand and what and you start thinking in terms of one thousand instead of in terms of two thousand but in reality it's actually two thousand dollars and of course in addition to all of that unfortunately all of the prices being marketed by nvidia are only applicable here in the United States of America. The moment you go to Canada, those prices are a, a lot worse. The moment you go to Australia, oh yeah, those prices are way worse. And of course, a lot of places in Europe and Asia also have worse pricing as well. And that comes down to you know tariffs, trade agreements, and shipping costs and a whole slew of other things, right? But I don't have to tell you that. Most of you in my comment section, you already know. Anyway, let me know in the comment section below what you think. Are you getting a 50 series card? If so, what model are you going for? I'm very curious about that. And this will be my last video on the 50 series cards until after they launch. And then after they launch, I think the only content I'll make is probably review content because I'm gonna have to go out, buy the card myself, and then bring it home, review it, and then I'll get a video up way later than everybody else, unfortunately, but you know, NVIDIA is not sending me review samples, and that's fine. I haven't earned that yet. That's not where I'm at, but thank you so much for your support, and that's all I got for this video. If you liked it, please do me a favor. Hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed, and until next time, you rock out.